Sita. Good morning and a warm welcome to today's Eucharistic celebration from Redemptorist Media Center. During this Holy Mass, we pray for the following intentions. We pray for the repose of the soul of Harry Daniel Davis, C.A. Maria Raj, Mr. Ulfong de Mello, for all the departed souls of Harry Rodriguez family, Sharon Conceição, Mrs. Philomena Patrick, for the dear departed souls of Joseph family, for the holy souls in purgatory of the Chico family, Crystal Frutal, for all the souls of the deceased, living and the unborn members of all the families and their family trees, for all the souls of the deceased, living and unborn of the Melchis family, Amul Mary Susainadan, Aaron Arul Mary, Mr. Rachel, Mrs. Pushpam, for all souls of the faithful departed, Peter Pinto and Mary Pinto, Neville Felix, Letty Pereira, Ralph Pereira, Patrick Saldana, Diotita Dice, Mrs. H. D. McMohan, for the repose of the souls of the family members of David and Martina, Doreen Sparrow, Joseph Cruz, Mary Anthony Cruz, Kanika Mary, Raymond Deepak, Margaret Annie Dice, Senior Stella Morais, Harry Antoine David, Carmeline Fernandez, Moses Xavier F., Thomas Martins, Peter Mark de Cruz, and for the soul of Ebronel Christie. We also offer this Mass as Thanksgiving for to our mother of Thanksgiving Mass to our mother Mary of good health by Mrs. Rita Anthony, Mike and Joyce Priest. Thanksgiving for recovery of Father Peter Lourdes SDB and others from the community. Wedding anniversary of Alan and Carol Jones. Wedding anniversary of Alan Carol Jones. Thanksgiving for the intentions of Abhishek, Usha and Prem. Birthday of Ronan. Thanksgiving Mass to Our Lady of Good Health by Leo, Anthony and Matilda. Thanksgiving to St. Jude by Mario and Maria. Thanksgiving for the intentions of Vinod Kumar and family, for the intentions of Sujata and family. On the birthday blessings and thanksgiving by Nisim de Silva. On the 75th birthday of Severine Gomez from Mumbai. Thanksgiving for blessings received by Divya Dominic. On the 6th birthday of Sarah Agnes Reddy, Thanksgiving for the intentions of Michelle Rodriguez, Thanksgiving for the intentions of Rachel Cruz, for all the favors received and for all for good health of Anju Menezes, Thanksgiving for the intentions of Elizabeth, Thanksgiving and well being of Shannon Shireen Shirley Arthur of US. 80th birthday, blessings of Ida Fernandez. Thanksgiving for all teachers on the occasion of Teachers Day by Melanie Silvera. Thanksgiving to Mother Mary by Mary Moses and family. Thanksgiving for the intentions of Moses and family. Birthday wishes of Vijaya Raman on the 40th birthday of Naveen Anish. On the birthday of 
Ibiola Mary. We also offer this Eucharist as for the special intentions. To find a suitable life partner by George Thomas for special intentions of Althea Fiona for the special intention of Mary Ann Charles for safety and protection and return home for Christmas by Aaron and Anne Batello for good health of Anthony Swami Appa for special intention for good health of the family the Charles children of Menezes family for a miraculous healing from for Sheldon and his family for special intention of Daphne for good health of Mr. and Mrs. Vincent for good health of Catherine Anand and Tanya for healing and speedy recovery of Joy Aloysius Thomas for a speedy recovery from COVID for the intention of Anthony Rajsi for speedy recovery from sickness from Maya Narona for good health of Doreen Thomas of Chennai for the good health of Doreen Thomas of Chennai, for emotional fortitude and physical recovery of Mari, and for the special intentions and good health of Benu. With these intentions and with our own, let us now prayfully participate in this Holy Eucharist. to the living God, glory, alleluia. Come to the living God, glory, alleluia. The sun and moon may pass away, this word will never stay. His power is forevermore, glory, alleluia. Glory to the Trinity. Divine unity, the Father, Son, and Spirit, one, from whom all life and goodness come. Good morning, dear friends, and a very, very warm welcome to this Eucharistic celebration and Father Joseph Royan. And along with me is Father Gerard, who will be assisting me during this liturgy. And our technical assistants are Father Joseph Beck, Brother Prashanto, Sita Ram, and Father Charles Vijay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Today, the Mother Church celebrates an important feast, and especially for us here in India, the feast of St. Teresa of Kolkata. Just recently, we had celebrated her birthday on the 26th of, on the the 26th of August, she was born in the year 1910. She joined the Institute of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the year 1928, known as the Sisters of the Loreto. In the year 1929, on the 6th of Jan, she arrived to India, to Calcutta. She was professed in the year 1931, she made her perpetual vows in the year 1937. She was made the principal of the Loretta School in Entali in Calcutta in the year 1944. In the year 1946, on the 10th of September, she received a call within a call to found the Congregation of the Missionaries of Charity. And for the very first time, she wore the sari of the congregation on the 17th of August, 1948. 
This is what she says. By blood, I am an Albanian. By citizen, an Indian. By faith, I am a Catholic nun. As to my calling, I belong to the world. As to my heart, I belong entirely to the heart of Jesus. As we celebrate this wonderful feast of a great saint whom, whom we have witnessed during our own lifetime, we pray especially for the congregation that she founded, for Sister Prema, and there are over 5,000 nuns and members of the missionaries of charity working across the world, doing wonderful work among the poor, especially among the dying and the destitute, that God may protect them, that God may fill them with more tremendous love to serve humanity. Today is also a very special day for us here in India as we celebrate Teacher's Day. And we fondly remember all the teachers who devote themselves in enhancing knowledge and wisdom among all. We pray that God may bless the teachers. I fondly remember all my teachers who taught me. These are days of novena in preparation for the nativity of our Blessed Virgin Mary, and we seek her intercession during this Eucharist as we prepare our hearts, recalling to mind our many sins and humbly praying for God's forgiveness and mercy. I confess to Almighty my God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers and, and sisters, that, that I, I have greatly sinned in my, in my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my, through my most grievous fault, therefore, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the, Virgin, all the angels, angels and saints, and you, you my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Have 
mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of all goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of all goodwill. O oh, you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Amen. Let us pray. God, who called the virgin Saint Teresa to respond to the love of your Son thirsting on the cross, with outstanding charity to the poorest of the poor, grant us, we beseech you by her intercession, to minister to Christ in our suffering brothers and sisters, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 6 to 11. Thus says the Lord, Is not this the fast that I choose, to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. Then shall your light break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rare God. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness, if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. And as the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with a harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. I will bless, bless the, the Lord, Lord at, at all, all times. times. For the word of the Lord is upright and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle. He puts the deeps in storehouses. I will bless, bless the Lord at all times. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. 
I will bless the Lord at all times. Gospel acclamation. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come you that are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and you gave clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. The good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, recently I came across an amazing testimony of couple Dave a former captain of the Indian cricket team responsible for winning the first ever World Cup for India in the year 1983. He was leading a life of fulfillment with his beautiful wife, Romy. But even after 14 years of their marriage, the happiness of having a child eluded them. For everyone else and even in front of the media, they appeared to be happy, but no one really saw an aspect of their life that created a vacuum. In the year 1995, Kapil and Romy were on a visit to Kolkata, and a good friend of couple made an appointment for the couple with Mother Teresa. So, couple Though he knew Mother Teresa never had an opportunity to meet her, and this was his first encounter with his lovely woman, Mother Teresa. And so, Mother Teresa by then was very frail. She appeared ill, but she was willing to meet this couple, couple and Romy. And they had a wonderful time. 
This little encounter was so memorable for Kapil and Romy. And Kapil expressed the deep sorrow in their hearts. And Mother Teresa said to them, Do not worry. God is kind. And they were hoping that they would get an opportunity to adopt a child from one of her orphanages. But Mother Teresa said to them, God will look into the matter, not to worry. And the couple left meeting Mother Teresa with tremendous peace in their hearts. Months passed by, couple totally forgot about the visit to uh, Kolkata with Mother Teresa. But sometime later, the friend called up couple again who made this appointment with Mother Teresa and said, couple, Mother Teresa was inquiring about Romy. How is Romy? Romy by now was five months pregnant. And the couple had not informed Mother Teresa about it. But the fact that Mother Teresa inquired about Romy, couple knew then that Mother had the knowledge of Romy's pregnancy all along. And a growing feeling inside him told him that this was only possible through the blessing of Mother Teresa. It was a unique and spiritual experience and their daughter Amir was born a few months later. And couple would always tell his friends about this incident and how they were blessed with a child through the intercession of St. Teresa of Kolkata. My dear friends, this is just one of the many, many, many stories that's associated with this wonderful saint from Kolkata. As we celebrate her feast this morning, the 5th of September, I'm not going to be narrating to you her entire vocation story because most of us had the good fortune of witnessing firsthand her life and not only her life but also the canonization of this wonderful saint. But what I'm going to be reflecting with you this morning is about an aspect of her life that was so central to everything St. Teresa of Kolkata was. An aspect of a life that was instrumental to what Mother Teresa did. It was her profound love for Jesus in the most blessed sacrament. Her tremendous love for the Holy Eucharist. That was the powerhouse of what made Teresa a saint. The Holy Eucharist. If you ever get an opportunity to visit any of the convents of St. Teresa, of the missionaries of charity, and if you ever get a chance to go to the sacristy, there is a board which is written with these words, meant for the priest, to remind the priest to celebrate every Mass with devotion, freshness, contemplation, and enthusiasm. And these are the words written on that board. And when I was celebrating my first Thanksgiving Eucharist, I was reminded of the words of St. Teresa. And this is what she says. Celebrate this Mass as if it is your first Mass. Celebrate this Mass as if it is your last Mass. And your only mass. Of course, these words apply not just to the celebrant, but to everyone who takes part in the Holy Eucharist. This was her profound love and devotion to the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. When Mother Teresa received her call within her call, remember, St. Teresa was already a teacher, a Loreto nun. She was a principal of the Loreto School in Empali. And she was on this strange journey from Kolkata to Darjeeling on the 10th of September in the year 1946 to do her annual retreat. And that's when the Lord, as she was meditating on Jesus on the cross, who said these words, I thirst. And the Lord was thirsting for souls, especially to manifest his love to all humanity, especially to the poor. And she received this profound call, a call within the call. And she was drafting her constitution in the years 1946 to 1947. And in her constitution, this is what she writes. She says the sisters of a congregation of the missionaries of charity should use every means 
to learn and increase that tender love for Jesus in the blessed sacrament. To do everything to experience and to learn the tender love of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament of the Eucharist. And this is what she goes on to write. If we have our Lord in the midst of us with daily mass and holy communion, I fear nothing for the sisters nor for myself. He will look after us, but without him I cannot be, but I am helpless. Without the Eucharistic Lord, I'm nothing and I'm helpless. This only goes to show her deeper understanding of the reality of the Eucharist and her mystical union with the Eucharistic Lord. This unbroken spousal union that gave Mother Teresa all the energy, strength and vitality and enthusiasm. If ever you had an opportunity to have met her, she was so frail but she would go about her work with so much of enthusiasm because every morning she would spend that time before the Blessed Sacrament. Her day would not begin without spending that time before the Blessed Sacrament because that was a source of power and strength. If life she lived was no longer her life, but it was Jesus who lived in her and worked through her. She was able to do all things in Jesus. For Jesus and with Jesus, who strengthened her through her daily reception of the Holy Eucharist. In her vision that she had of our Blessed Mother, our Blessed Mother told her to take care of her people, especially the poor, and to carry Jesus to them. And as she was reflecting on this, she remembered the scene of the Annunciation. And the Annunciation, Mary first received Jesus in her heart, even before she could receive Jesus in her womb. And she was the first blessed sacrament that carried Jesus to her cousin Elizabeth. Annunciation scene was a first Holy Communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And we know that just as Jesus allows himself to be broken in every Eucharist, and he gives us himself as food and drink, Mother Teresa invites all of us to break ourselves like Jesus and to give up ourselves in loving service to everyone, starting in our homes, in our families, in our communities, for love begins at home. For Mother Teresa, Eucharist and love for the poor was inseparable. The same Jesus who says, this is my body, is the same Jesus who says, whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do it unto me. For we see the, the face of Jesus in the disfigured faces of the many who are poor and suffering. And Mother Teresa reached out this love of Jesus in the poor. And she was so much united with the Eucharistic Lord that people no longer saw Mother Teresa, but they saw the face of Jesus in whatever Mother Teresa did. Mother Teresa had a habit of giving a card to all those who come to visit her. And in that card were these words. It read, the fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love. And the fruit of love is service. And the fruit of service is peace. And this is the way we meet Christ. May your profound love for the Eucharist enable you to see the face of Jesus in others, especially the poor, and may you find peace in your loving service in, what, in, in all that you do. And may St. Teresa of Kolkata intercede for us. Amen. Oh
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O God, the homage of our humble service, which we present here on the solemnity of St. Teresa, in long that by participation in this mystery, our lives may burn with charity and be consumed with zeal for the salvation of souls through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have brought the Centurita a share in the curse of your son dying on the cross making her a missionary of charity. She took upon herself the rejection of the poor and placing herself at their service. She radiated the light of your merciful love, and so with the angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the name of your praise, and without end we acclaim. and giving you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, Saint Teresa of Kolkata, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, the God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We turn to God, our loving Father, in the words of our Saviour as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to share in this great banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us. Receive it. This is a time of spiritual communion. The Lord wants to enter into your heart, the Eucharistic Jesus. I want you to spend this time in deep communion with Jesus who comes to you spiritually and I invite you to say this prayer along with me, an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable now to receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Oh, 
We have the prayer for the end of the pandemic. Almighty and merciful Father, who show your love to all your creation, we come before you asking for a quick control of the coronavirus currently ravaging our world. Hear graciously the prayers we make for those affected by the virus in various parts of the world. Grant healing to the sick eternal life to the dead, and consolation to the bereaved families. Protect doctors, nurses, and others serving the sick. We pray that an effective medicine and vaccine to combat the sickness be speedily found. We pray for all governments and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people we make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. We have a special prayer to St. Teresa of Kolkata. We pray together. Jesus, you made St. Teresa an inspiring example of firm faith and burning charity, an extraordinary witness to the way of spiritual childhood, and a great and esteemed teacher of the value and dignity of every human life. Hear the requests of all those who seek her intercession, especially the petition I now implore. May we follow her example in heeding your cry of thirst from the cross and joyfully loving you in the distressing disguise of the poorest of the poor, especially those most unloved and unwanted. We ask this in your name and through the intercession of Mary, your mother, and the mother of us all. Amen. So once again, a very happy feast to you of St. Teresa of Kolkata, a special wishes to Sister Prema and to all the sisters, brothers and priests of the missionaries of charity, and also to all the teachers, a very happy Teacher's Day. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries we have received, O Lord our God, Foster within us the fire of charity, by which St. Teresa, with a joyful spirit, served Jesus Christ, your Son, and the poor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. No one can live as a Lead us to Jesus, your loving Son. Come with us, Mary God. Come with us, Mary. Come with us, Mary. Come with us, Mary.